Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and mercy. In peace from above, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for the peace of the world, the welfare of the Holy Churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and mercy. For this holy house and those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and mercy. This beatitude, our Metropolitan Tikon. For his eminence, our Archbishop Alexander, for the honorable priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For this country, its president, for all civil authorities, and for the armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For this city and every city and countryside and the faithful dwelling in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For seasonable weather, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For travelers by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. That we may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other in all our life unto Christ our God. For unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other in all our life unto Christ our God. Me, For thine is the might and thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen.
and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. Thou art a good God, and lovest mankind, and unto thee do we send up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. In thy kingdom remember us, O Lord, when thou comest in thy kingdom. Blessed in thy kingdom, O God, my Savior, and save me, for thou alone lovest mankind. Remember us, O Lord, when thou comest in thy kingdom. Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of Adam deceived, yet again by the tree of the cross was the thief saved, who cried out, Remember me in thy kingdom, O Lord. Remember us, O Lord, when thou comest in thy kingdom. Blessed are you, and then shall revive you, and persecute you, and shall say, O letter of evil, Restorer of life, who has broken down the gates and portals of Hades, thou hast saved all who cry out to thee, O Savior. Glory to thine arising. Remember us, O Lord, when thou comest in thy kingdom. captive, and by thy resurrection has filled all with joy. Remember me in that thou art compassionate. With song let us attend. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ. O Son of God, who rose from the dead, say,
to thy spirit. The prokemenon is in the sixth tone. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. To thee, O Lord, will I call. O my God, be not silent to me. In the seventh tone, the righteous one shall rejoice in the Lord and shall set his hope on him. The righteous one shall rejoice in the Lord and shall set at his hope upon him. The reading is from the epistle of the Holy Apostle Paul to the Romans. Brethren, we then that are stronger ought to bear with the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of you please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of of them that reproached thee fell upon me. For whatsoever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another, according to Christ Jesus, that with one mind and one mouth you may glorify God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Therefore receive ye one another, just as Christ also received you to the glory of God. What things were a gain to me, those I have counted as a loss for the sake of Christ. Yea, doubtless I also count all things as a loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ, and may be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through the faith in Jesus Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, have this in mind, and if in anything you think otherwise, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us mind the same thing. Brethren, join in following me and note those who so walk as you have us for an example. And to thy spirit, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. He that aid of the Most High shall appear out of heaven. He will say to the Lord, Thou art my protector and my refuge, my God, in Him will I trust. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in His commandments. When he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? He said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no man knows it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. And they went out, and behold, they brought to him a man mute and demon-possessed. And when the demon was cast out, the mute spoke, and the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never seen like this in Israel. But the Pharisee says he casts out demons by the ruler of the demons. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or fathers or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake in the Gospels, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time, 
houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life but many who are first will be last and the last will be first now they were on the road going up to jerusalem and jesus was going for them and they were amazed and they followed and they were afraid but jesus called them to himself and said to them you know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority. Yet it shall not be so among you, for whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant, and whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. He is there. Today we celebrate the feast of Saint Jacob, uh, Nestor, Nestorol, I probably pronounced it wrong, of Alaska, apostle to Alaska, a priest, a 19th century um, Creole, meaning he was a mixed descent of Russian and native Alaska descent priest and was one of the first uh, native clergy within Alaska to do missionary work. And he worked, and he sacrificed. And his life, if you listen to the hymns and you read his life, which I encourage you to do, which is on the OCA website, uh, Father Alexa in one of his books also has a little bit further explanation, is a life that has a lot of, uh, of suffering. His missionary activity involved going to very small villages and then working with a small number of people. But when he went there, he usually typically had to build the church. He had to build his house. He had to um, be with the people. He wasn't um, tr treated well by, let's say, the local governors who often were um, um, partially Russian or connected with the Russian-American company. So he had to deal with things like racism because he was a mix uh, of a mixed race, his father being Russian, his mother being native Alaskan. He had to uh, deal with the privations of just the simple what it means to be a missionary in Alaska, which is traveling by boat and, and having a, a territory where he has to travel at least 2,000 miles and circuit to serve the few people that he has. Outside of that, uh, in his life, he um, has a, at least one year, I believe 1836, where his wife dies of, of cancer. And then the house that he just got done building, after spending a few years building it, also burns down. Then his father decides to die. He just decided, you know. <laughs> so in this context, an isolated priest out in the middle of nowhere, without much support, you know, your typical response from your bishop might take a year or two to get back to you. Um, he petitioned to go to uh, Sitka and, and found himself waiting for seven years um, to, to really get a finite answer that he could go there. So the bottom line for him is that he sacrificed, and what we praise him for is his faithfulness in the midst of suffering, um, that he was humble, that when he was suffering, he turned to God, and he saw suffering and even the designs of the evil one. You know, uh, Father Alexa accounts a story where they send him an assistant, and within a period of time, the assistant decides that kind of loses his mind a little bit, or maybe he has a drinking problem. I'm fuzzy on the details, even though I read it literally last night. Um, loses it and tries to stab him. So 
even the people who were sent to him. He got another one who was there simply for profit because if you were to work it with a Russian American company which was there for furs, um, you could also become rich off the native people. As I was saying, we, we praise him for his, even though the enemy threw many arrows at him and many darts at him, he saw all of these things as opportunities uh, for him to connect to God and for him to be humble and to be peaceful in the, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of hard work and labor for the kingdom of heaven. In today's epistle from Philippians, the Apostle Paul says he, he counts it all as, as rubbish to lay a hold of Christ. What does he count as rubbish? Well, his lineage, his education, his, his pedigree that he was given um, by, uh, by Gamaliel and his, his possible fame, the fact that he would have eventually been one of those Pharisees who sat at the head of the table with the broad garments and, and the wonderful raiments that he would have been the full authority. But instead, Paul runs from village to village and suffers shipwreck and privations and all sorts of lashings and imprisonment. And he says he counts everything, all of his pedigree, everything that uh, he once took his pride in and would have been part of his identity, he just considers it dumb. Because the only thing that matters to him is that he lays a hold of Christ. And that a laying a hold of Christ he sees in exchange. He exchanges this earthly existence for eternal existence. He gives up what is ultimately in the end meaningless because we all go to the grave in order to lay hold of Christ who fills him with life in the resurrection and raises him from the dead. Now, this message of, of sacrifice of, of St. Jacob, the epistle of St. Paul, where he talks about call, calling light, call, counting everything else as rubbish, these we should take into our hearts. Everything of value requires sacrifice. And one of the things that you'll hear from the pulpit, at least, but you should also hear from the depths of your soul, is that the most important thing of life is the kingdom of heaven. That Christ, laying hold of Christ, is more meaningful than any other aspect in your life that you think is meaningful. But that in laying hold of Christ is going to require of you a sacrifice. That there is no possibility of laying a hold of Christ without sacrifice. Whether we're simply talking about in our prayers, in our life of coming to church and living the faith, spiritual temptation, overcoming the devil, being a warrior for Christ requires our energy. It requires our dedication. And it requires a spirit that is willing to die for Christ. This is why we praise St. Jacob and this is ultimately why we praise the Apostle Paul. Now, I'm just going to contrast this, and I ask you to uh, bear with me, and I ask you to forgive me if I overspeak. Um, none of this has to be binding on anybody. But I wonder what we've done a little bit by canceling church, by telling people to stay home. You know, on the one hand, we have told people to protect others. Now, if you're wearing a mask here, you're not wearing it because it protects you. You're wearing it for, because it protects others. That's a message that I think that the full faith of Christianity can get behind. But oftentimes we also sent the message that stay home because you might die. Stay home, fear death. Don't make sacrifices. You might get sick. Well, I'm not saying this is, I don't have a choice about what the church does. I'm, I'm a priest. I simply am here at the behest of the bishop. I have to implement his rules. But I am allowed to wonder what it does. And so sometimes I think that we've, that we've internalized, not just now because of a pandemic, but even before the pandemic, that in some way the Christian life was about preserving 
the things we like about life. Whether it is our popular cultural morality, our favorite, favorite political tropes, our prosperity, we've often used the faith to buttress those things. But sometimes in the pandemic, I feel like we've said, save yourself, save your lives. That seems to be in opposition to the gospel in some ways. Now again, take this with a grain of salt. I'm off script. I have no paper here. But I will encourage you to be like the Apostle Paul. To look at life as though laying a hold of, to experience life. To have from the depths of your heart the knowledge that Jesus Christ is the most important thing. And that whatever it takes to lay a hold of Christ is the most important thing. And that you make that the center of your life, regardless of whether it brings death to you. Because it brought death to Paul. And it brought death to all the martyrs of the early church. And it brought death to all those, um, to all those who sacrificed life and limb to spread the gospel because it is what matters. Because ultimately, the phrase that Jesus uses, he says, don't care about those who can kill the body, but have no ability to kill the soul. We have to care about our connection with God, which is the life of our soul. So may St. Jacob pray for us. Certainly he dealt with epidemics in his time. Certainly he dealt with isolation and privation. Certainly he dealt with many of the political unrest that we have as Alaska was purchased by the US and the native people were gradually pushed out of their own faith. Certainly he dealt personally with racism. So his prayers are, are important for us. May he pray us to lay us, pray for us to be Christian, to be ones that lay down our lives for others in pursuit of the kingdom of heaven, and that don't fear death, that we may lay hold of Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. Let us say with all our soul and with all our mind, let us say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Lord, Again, we pray for our Metropolitan Tecon, for our Archbishop Alexander, and for all our brethren in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for this country, its president, for all civil authorities, and for the armed forces. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the blessed and ever memorable holy orthodox patriarchs and for the blessed and ever memorable founders of this holy church, for the newly departed servant of God, Sky, and for all our fathers and brethren, the orthodox departed this life before us, who here in all the world lie asleep in the Lord. Lord. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, and visitation for the servants of God, Camden, Thomas, Rachel, Maurice, Christina, Linnea, George, George, Plato, George, Millie, Linda, Dennis, Marina, Nikolai, Tabitha, Veronica, Molly, Kimberly, Andrew, Diane, Paul, Jessica, Trey, Bridget, George, Margaret, Stephanie, Elena, Sue, Jacob, Ray, Kimberly, Paul, Amanda, Nicole, Sarah, Sam, Mose, Brian, Becky, 
and for the brethren of this holy temple, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. O Lord God, almighty Lord of heaven and earth, and of all creation, visible and invisible, in thine ineffable goodness, look down upon us, thy people gathered in thy holy name. Be our helper and defender in our day of affliction. Thou knowest our weakness, thou hearest our cry and repentance and contrition of heart. O Lord, who lovest mankind, deliver us from the threat of the coronavirus. Send thine angel to watch over us and protect us, grant us health and recovery to those suffering. Guide the hands of the physicians and preserve those who are healthy. Enable us to continue to, continue to serve our brothers, suffering brothers and sisters. We pray thee, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy and all venerable temple, for those who labor and those who sing, and all the people here present who await thy great and rich mercy. Lord, For thou art a merciful God, and lovest mankind, and unto thee do we send up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Pray to the Lord, ye catechumens. Lord, let us, the faithful, pray for the catechumens that the Lord may have mercy on them, that he may teach them the word of truth, that he may reveal to them the gospel of righteousness, that he may unite them to his holy Catholic and apostolic church, Save them, have mercy on them, help them, and keep them, O oh God, by thy grace. Bow your heads unto the Lord, ye catechumens. O Lord, our God, who dwells on high and regardest things below, and who has sent forth as the salvation of the race of men, thine only begotten Son, and God, our Lord Jesus Christ, look down upon thy servants, the catechumens, who have bowed their necks before thee, and make them worthy in due time of the lather of regeneration, the remission of sins, and the robe of incorruption. Unite them to thy holy Catholic and apostolic church, and number them with thy chosen flock, that with us they may also glorify thine all honorable and majestic name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. All catechumens depart, depart, catechumens, let us the faithful again and again in peace pray unto the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Wisdom for unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O oh God, by thy grace. Wisdom that guarded always by thy might, we may send up glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
This Beatitude are Metropolitan Tikon, Archbishop of Washington, and Metropolitan of all America and Canada. His Eminence are Archbishop Alexander, Archbishop of Dallas, and of all the South. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always now and ever and unto ages of ages. This country, its president, and all civil authorities, and those who are serving in the armed forces throughout the world. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always now and ever and unto ages of ages. The founders, benefactors, and beautifiers of this holy house. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always now and ever and unto ages of ages. The sick, the suffering, the persecuted Christians throughout the world, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always now and ever and unto ages of ages. All those names we commemorate today, especially the newly departed servant of God's sky, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always now and ever and unto ages of ages. You and all Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always now and ever and unto ages of ages. complete our prayer unto the Lord. Lord have the precious gifts now offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For this holy house and those who enter it with faith, reverence on the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord That we may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us ask of the Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies. Let us ask of the Lord. Pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. All things that are good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. A Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, and peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, 
and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other in all our life unto Christ our God. Sure. Through the compassions of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy good and life-giving spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity, one in essence, and the divine Christ is in our midst. He is in the shadow. The doors, the doors, and wisdom let us attend. Attend that we may offer the holy oblation in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with thy spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. Thee, to praise thee, to give thanks to thee, and to worship thee in every place of thy dominion. 
For thou art God, ineffable, inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existence, existing and eternally the same. Thou and thine only begotten Son and thy Holy Spirit, thou it was who brought us from non-existence into being, and when we had fallen away, didst raise us up again, and didst not cease to do all things until thou hast brought us up to heaven, and hast endowed us with thy kingdom which is to come. For all these things we give thanks to thee and thine only begotten Son and to thy Holy Spirit, for all the things of which we know and which we know not, and for all the benefits bestowed upon us, whether manifest or unseen. And we thank thee for this liturgy which thou hast deigned to accept at our hands, though there stand beside thee thousands of archangels and hosts of angels, the cherubim and the seraphim, six-winged, many eye who soar aloft, borne on their pinions, singing the triumphant hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying, who love us mankind we also cry aloud and say holy art thou and all holy thou and thine only begotten son and thy holy spirit holy art thou and all holy and magnificent is thy glory who is so loved thy the world as to give thine only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life who when he had come and fulfilled the dispensation for us in the night in which he was given up, or rather gave himself up for the life of the world, took bread in his holy, most pure and blameless hands, and when he had given thanks and blessed and howled and broken it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sin. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sin. Remembering the saving commandment and all those things which have come to pass for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sitting at the right hand, and the second in glorious coming, offering unto thee thine own, of thine own, on behalf of all and for all. unto thee this rational and bloodless worship, and we ask thee and pray thee and supplicate thee, send down thy Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here offer, and make this bread to be the precious body of thy Christ, Amen. and that which is in this cup the precious blood of thy Christ, Amen. making the change by thy Holy Spirit. 
that they may be to those who partake for vigilance of soul, for the remission of sins, for the communion of thy Holy Spirit, for the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, for boldness towards thee and not for judgment or condemnation. Again we offer unto thee this rational worship for those who have fallen asleep in faith, ancestors, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith, especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary. It is truly me to bless thee, O Theotokos, ever blessed and most pure and the mother of thy God, more honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond the pen and the seraphim. Without corruption thou gavest birth to God the Word. Truth Among the first, remember, O Lord, our Metropolitan Tikon and our Archbishop Alexander. Grant them for the Holy Church as a peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, rightly to divide the word of thy truth. And, and grant that with one mouth and one heart we may glorify and praise thine all honorable and majestic name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. And may the mercies of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. And with thy spirit. Having remembered all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Precious gifts now offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That our God, who loves mankind, having received them upon his holy and noetic altar above the heavens as a sweet spiritual fragrance, will send down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Lord. That we may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. All things that are good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. A Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, and peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. 
having asked for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. And make us worthy, O Master, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call upon thee, the heavenly God is Father, and to say, power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Peace be unto all. And to thy spirit. Bow your heads unto the Lord. and compassion, love towards mankind, and thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine awfully good and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. And the holy things are for the holy. One is holy, one is Lord, Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
my sins and unto life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystical supper, O Son of God, accept me today as a communicant. For I will not speak of thy mystery to thine enemies. Not like Judas will I give thee a kiss, but like the thief will I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. May the communion of thy holy mysteries be neither to my judgment nor to my condemnation, O Lord, but to the healing of my soul and mind.
precious. partaken of the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly life-giving and dread mysteries of Christ, let us worthily give thanks unto the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Asking that the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. Thou art our sanctification, and unto thee do we send up glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. O Lord, who blesses those who bless thee and sanctifies those who trust in thee, save thy people and bless thine inheritance, preserve the fullness of thy church, sanctify those who love the beauty of thy house. Glorify them in return by thy divine power, and forsake us not who put our hope in thee. Give peace to thy world, to thy churches, to thy priests, to all those in civil authority, to the armed forces, and to all thy people. For every good gift and perfect gift is from above, coming down from thee, the Father of lights. And unto thee do we send up glory, thanksgiving, and worship. 
to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mother of the Holy and All Honorable Apostles of Saint Innocent, the patron of this community, of Saint Jacob, the Enlightener of Alaska, and we commemorate today of the holy righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us. For he is good and love us mankind. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is in our shadow. Good morning. It's good to be back after a, a brief vacation. There's only a few announcements today, and most of them have to do with the services that are upcoming. Um, this coming Saturday, um, we'll be starting the Dormition Fast, um, which will go on through um, the 15th of August. And so that starts Saturday, and, and we're primarily fasting um, uh, in honor of the Mother of God's uh, repose and her ascension into heaven. And um, in, in preparation for that, but this year uh, we might want to think of it as, as another reason for fasting, um, which would be that we have sins, our society's in chaos, and I don't know if you've ever read any of the Old Testament or New Testament, but one of the common Christian responses to chaos in society and, and um, general pestilence is, is to fast and pray. So we've been given an opportunity this summer. Um, to start that off, on Friday evening, we'll have Vespers, Saturday morning, um, there's, a, uh, there's a feast of the procession of the cross. Um, interestingly, that particular feast of the procession of the cross uh, would be in uh, Byzantine times when they would take the cross and they would process throughout Constantinople and then bring it back to the church because that was the time when they were known to get sick. And so they processed with the cross in order with the wood of the true cross in order to disperse the sickness and to um, 
and to be done with it. So we'll also uh, probably be adding that malaria to, um, uh, uh, to remove the death-bearing pestilence that is upon us, um, said with a half smile, inappropriately, as usual. All right, so there is no weekday liturgy. There will be a Saturday liturgy. That was the point of all that and also the spiritual stuff too. Um, we will have um, 6 p.m. West, uh, Vespers on Wednesday and also resume having the effective Christian ministry. To all you catechumens out there, um, I'm going to have to talk to you about scheduling catechism, uh, maybe changing the day. Um, if you're doing the financial piece, that's at 1.30. And if you're interested in Zoom coffee hour, that's at 12.30. Any, are there any names day or anniversaries or anything that need to be commemorated? I know that mine was the 17th. And I'm not. Is your birthday, name day? Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Name day, birthday, anything? Okay. Grant the Lord a prosperous and peaceful life, health, salvation, good day, sing in all things to the handmaiden of God, Marina, who celebrated her name day, and preserved her, O Lord, for many years. God grant you many years. God grant you many years. God grant you many, many, many years. Christ is in our midst. May God be with you.